Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat! Oh my God. Woo! Dolphin in the solo kingfish trip right there. That's a beast. That's mutton snapper right there, baby. drop rig. A specialized multi-hook setup made for dropping down to depths of 450 to 600 feet to target gray tilefish, also known as blue line tilefish. This is also a deep drop rig made for going to the same depth, 450 to 600. The only difference between this one and the other one is, is this one is manufactured from a bait shop. The other one is homemade. In this episode, I'm gonna go over exactly how you can make your own deep drop rig for targeting tile fish. Before we get into this though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Okay, so as I said, you can buy a pre-made deep drop rig from the bait store. It's made with three-way swivels, hooks of your choice. You can put on glow beads, you can do whatever you want. They'll custom make it for you. It costs around $17 to $18 for a rig. That does not include the light or the sinker. That is just the rig. You can make your own at home and it costs under $3. All you're using is monofilament and a couple of circle hooks. The sinker, which is a one pound sinker, which is what you'll wanna use, usually costs between three and $4. You're gonna need a light to do deep dropping. No light, no bite. The light for a deep drop setup usually costs 15 to $16 from a bait store. So after all said and done, a homemade deep drop rig will cost you around $21. The store-bought one will cost you upwards of $35 after the light and the sinker. This is a three-way swivel. Lots of times when making deep drop rigs, you can use a three-way swivel. In this episode, that is not what I'm going to show you how to do. I'm going to show you how to tie it with just the monofilament leader using a knot called a dropper loop. We will use what is called a girth hitch to tighten on our hardware, being our sinker and our hooks. Okay, so let's get into making this rig. To tie the deep drop rig properly, we're gonna need a few things. Gonna need cutting tool. Two 60 circle hooks from Mustad. These particular hooks are Mustad Ultra Point Offset circle hooks. You're going to need a light. Four to five feet of 40 pound monofilament leader. A one pound weight. A size six barrel swivel. This one is from Mustad. You can use any manufacturer that you would like. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to tie two dropper loops. Knowing that tile fish will not swim up further than two feet from the bottom to feed. We don't want to make our knots very high up. We're going to say this is the end. So we're going to go up about a foot to 18 inches and we're going to tie our first dropper loop. To tie a dropper loop, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to form a loop. Now that we have formed our loop, we are going to wrap we are going to wrap the top line around the two bottom lines seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, we are going to take the bottom, the single strand and send it through the center of the two middle strands. 
So you wind up with something like this. Up here, you need an anchor point to pull your dropper loop tight. So I have a screw on my cutting board. So it is essentially two clinch knots that will pull tight against themselves to form a loop. And then you have your loop. Now, about a foot away, we're going to do another one. You don't again. Powfish will not swim very far up from the bottom. So you need to make these close together. That way your whole rig is not much more than two feet tall. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we are going to pull that middle piece back through there, hook it on our anchor point, and we will start to pull our loop. And there we have it. We have two dropper loops that are about a foot away from each other. So what I wanna do now is I wanna make a basic surgeon knot about six inches because if this is the bottom, this will be six inches and then about 18 inches from the bottom, which is perfect height for towel fish to swim up and eat will be both hooks, not above two feet from the bottom. So I'm going to make a basic surgeon's knot to where I can attach my sinker. Surgeon's knot is essentially, you make a loop, then you make another loop and we're gonna basically do two overhand knots with it. So that's a surgeon's knot. Very basic knot, doesn't have to be anything complicated. It's not gonna have any tension being put against it, except for holding a weight. We will trim off the tag end of the surgeon's knot. So we have our surgeon's knot at the bottom. From here to here is about six inches, which is our first dropper loop. Then about 12 inches away is our second dropper loop. About 12 inches away from our second dropper loop is where we're gonna to wanna to end our rig. And that's where we're going to put our barrel swivel. So we loop that on. And we're going to tie that on with a basic clinch knot. trim off the tag of that clinch knot. So we have our swivel, which is the top end. We have dropper loop, dropper loop, surgeon knot. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our weight. This is a one pound weight. So we're gonna do what's called a girth hitch to attach our sinker. You put the loop through, and then you're gonna wrap it around the bottom and then we're going to pull it back over and that is called a girth hitch and it just hangs right there like that next thing we'll do is we're going to put on our two hooks we're also going to use a girth hitch from the dropper loop put the loop through pull the loop we're going to send the hook through the loop and back around and then pull it tight on itself And there you have it. That is your deep drop rig. No longer than two feet, perfect for tile fish. To set this up, 
we go from our end of our main line, which will have a monofilament or a fluorocarbon leader, with our snap swivel, we are going to feed on our light. Then we will put on our barrel swivel and we are ready to go. This rig is complete. You hook it up with your favorite bait, you drop it down, you wait for the bites, then you retrieve your fish. What I want to do is I want to show you how these lights work. They are water activated. You dip them in the water, they either strobe or they stay on constantly and then once they dry off, they self deactivate. I'm gonna dump it in the water and then I'm gonna go kill the lights. So when you're down 500 feet, this is what the fish see, a strobing light. This attracts them to the food. It is an attractant, it is something that is unnatural down there. It looks like phosphorescence. So that is how that light works. You dunk it in the water, it activates, and then it will keep strobing until it dries out. So that's the basic setup of the deep drop rig and how to hook it to your reel and get you going. Now we're going to go over some tips and advice on how to target tilefish with this specialized tool. The first thing is, is to understand tilefish. When you're deep dropping, you're going to be looking for tilefish between 450 and 600 feet. That's where they hang out, in the mud flats. Tilefish feed when the sun is right above your head. They feed in bright conditions. If it's overcast and cloudy and nasty, you're not going to catch them. As soon as the sun goes down and it's dusk, you're not going to catch them. They feed in light. I like to call tilefish the solar powered fish. For some odd reason, they just feed when it's light out. They don't feed at nighttime. As I was saying, between 450 and 600 feet is where the tile fish live. So you're going to need to understand how to look at your GPS in order to find tile fish. So when you're looking at your GPS and you're heading out off the ledges, you're going to see contour lines which define how steep your drop off is. On your GPS, when you have contour lines that are tightly packed together, that means you have a drop off that is steep. The further apart the contour lines get, that means the less of an incline your ground is going at. So when you're out in 450 to 600 and you're looking at your GPS, you're going to want to find the portions where the ground is the flattest, meaning your contour lines are spread the furthest apart. That is more than likely the areas where the mud flats are, where the tilefish burrow and live. Tilefish do not swim up to eat your bait. They won't swim up more than two feet to get bait. As I stated during the making of the rig, you don't want to make it more than two feet tall. They're not going to swim up and get that third hook if you have one that's up about three feet. Your average tile fish weighs about one to two pounds. The big ones are those good seven, eight pounders. Those are great catches and they're prized possessions and it's what people who are deep dropping for tile fish dream about. They're not rare. They happen maybe once, maybe twice a trip. Every tile fish you pull up is not going to be one of those giants, but you do catch them quite often. They are swimming around. The best bait for tile fish is debatable. I have found the best baits to be either squid or some sort of strip bait from either bonita or barracuda or mullet. It all depends upon the day as to what they're gonna eat. So bring a couple of different baits. If they're not eating the squid, maybe they'll eat the barracuda. So there's a couple of different ways to drop down for them once you've located a spot where you think tilefish are. You can either drop down by a manual reel, conventional reel loaded with braid, or you can drop down on an electric reel such as a uh, Daiwa Tanacom 1000 or a Lingren Pitman. Hand cranking them, it's more sporty. 
you're there to do it so that's what you're going to be into and you're going to spend the day hand cranking and go home worn out the electric reel way easier you can uh, drop down more times in one day but it is battery operated so your battery will lose charge as time goes on because of the strain on the weight and on the fish so you know both have their pros and their cons when deep dropping for tile fish you have to have braid you cannot drop down five six hundred feet with mono you will never feel the fish nibbling you won't feel them set either braid is stiff and it doesn't give you can feel the nibbles you can feel the tiniest fish nibbling on braid so braid is what you need for deep dropping so you've got your reels picked out you've got your line you've got your setup you've got your bait you're gonna drop down when you feel the nibbles and you're sure you have a fish on it will be a constant thumping on your line don't immediately start to pull up one fish can start a feeding frenzy and the other one will come and nab your other hook. Happens quite often, tile fish live in little communal groups so they feed on whatever comes around in a schooling factor almost. It is possible many times to pull up two fish at one time. Tile fish swim around all year long. They're here, you can catch them all year long. However, they do tend to feed more aggressively and are able to be located more predominantly in the later part of the year. When I target tilefish, I will go from mid-December to about maybe mid-March. That is the time of year where they are here off the southeast coast of Florida and it's easier to catch them because they are feeding more aggressively. All right, everybody. That about does it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned about how to tie a deep drop rig of your own and get out there and go and do it and bring home some gray tile fish. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.